So this is going to be the first forecast of two on the concept of electronegativity. So after this forecast, hopefully you'll be able to address these two objectives. First, you have to be able to define the term electronegativity, what it means. And secondly, you need to be able to explain the trends in electronegativity as you go across and down the periodic table. So what is electronegativity? It's the pull that an atom has for bonding or shared electrons. So if you look down here, we have two atoms. We have rubidium over here. Notice that its electronegativity is 1.89 and fluorine's is 4.5. So fluorine has a greater electronegativity. And what that is again is that here are these these are the electrons that they are both, say, sharing or trying to share, or, or the bonding electrons. And basically, we're saying that fluorine has a much greater pull on those electrons than rubidium. Okay, its pull is greater. So the question, of course, is why is that? So remember, the electronegativity is the pull that an atom has for bonding or shared electrons. As you go across the periodic table, what you're going to notice is that, and these numbers are electronegativities, the, the, the electronegativity increases as you go across, and that as you go down the periodic table, electronegativity decreases. So that is the trend. So now let's look at why that happens. So let's look at some atoms here on the periodic table. So here we are going across the periodic table from nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine. And you can see that electronegativity is increasing. And going down, we can see that it is decreasing. So let's start off by talking about as you go across. So there's one thing you'll notice. As you go across the periodic table, you are adding more protons. So you can see that um, nitrogen is going to have seven positive protons. Oxygen will have 8, and fluorine will have 9. And you're also adding electrons as you go across as well. And the key thing, though, is you're adding electrons to the same valence shell as you go across. And because you're also adding more protons, those positive protons are pulling in the valence shell. So the atoms are getting smaller as you go across. So those valence electrons are slightly closer to a more positive nucleus. So hopefully that might explain why fluorine has a greater pull when it forms a bond with other, another atom because not only does it have um, a greater number of protons than say nitrogen, its nucleus is also closer to that valence shell. Now as we go down the periodic table we are adding a lot more protons. So you can see for example up the top here fluorine has nine, chlorine has seven, and uh, bromine has 35. So there's a lot more positive protons to pull on the electrons. But the critical thing here is the distance. This nucleus is getting further and further away from the valence shell. So that is the main factor that is causing the decrease in electronegativity, is that the valence shell, or the bonding electrons, will always be much further away from that positive nucleus as you go down. This diagram might illustrate a little bit better here. You can see there's rubidium with fluorine. And you can see that fluorine has a much, much, much greater electronegativity than rubidium. Even though rubidium has many, many more protons in its nucleus, the problem is those protons are much, f these, the bonding electrons, so we're talking about these blue ones here. So remember, it's the pull that an atom has on these. So fluorine's pull is much greater. Even though it has less protons, its protons are actually closer to these bonding electrons compared to rubidiums. The other thing that's sort of happening is something called shielding as well a little bit, is that these electrons, which are sort of sitting between these shells where the electrons are sitting, but sitting between the nucleus and the bonding electrons, which are here, and so they're sort of shielding the positive charge a little bit from those electrons. So hopefully uh, this vodcast has addressed these two main objectives. First of all, can you define what electronegativity is, and secondly, can you explain uh, the patterns or changes in electronegativity as you go across and down the periodic table?